Or, Matilda had read every magazine in the house. One night, she got up her courage and asked her father for something she desperately wanted. A book? What do you want a book for? To read. To read? Why would you want to read when you got the television set sitting right in front of you? There's nothing you can get from a book that you can't get from a television faster. Get out of the way! Matilda already knew that she was somewhat different from her family. She saw that whatever she needed in this world, she'd have to get herself. The next morning, after her parents left, Matilda set off in search of a book. Children's books, please. In that room right over there. Would you like me to pick you out one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every day as soon as her mother went to bingo, Matilda walked the ten blocks to the library and devoured one book after another. When she finished all the children's books, she started wandering around in search of something else. Mrs. Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, offered Matilda some valuable library information. You know, you could have your very own library card, and then you could take books home. And you wouldn't have to walk here every day. You could take as many as you like. That would be wonderful. So Matilda's strong young mind continued to grow, nurtured by the voices of all those authors who had sent their books out into the world, like ships onto the sea. These books gave Matilda a hopeful and comforting message. You are not alone. Come today. Mm -mm. Where'd all this come from? The library. The library? You've never set foot in a library. You're only four years old. Six and a half. You're four. Six and a half. If you were six and a half, you'd be in school already. I want to be in school. I told you I was supposed to start school in September. You wouldn't listen. Get up. Get up. Get out of here. Give me that book. Here's Pie. How old is Matilda? Four. I'm six and a half, Mommy. Five, then. I was six in August. You're a liar. I want to go to school. <laughs> school? It's out of the question. Matilda's teacher, Miss Honey, was one of those remarkable people who appreciates every single child for who she or he is. I scooped these up for you, Miss Honey. Oh, how lovely. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, listen up, everybody. We have a new student with us today. This is Matilda Wormwood. I'd like you to sit over here with Lavender. Now, you all remember how scary your first days at school were, so I'd like you to be especially nice to Matilda and make her feel welcome, all right? Could you get her workbook for her, please? Yes, Miss Honey. You can sit down. Miss Honey was a wonderful teacher and a friend to everyone, but her life was not as simple and beautiful as it seemed. Miss Honey had a deep, dark secret. Though it caused her great pain, she did not let it interfere with her teaching. Well, Matilda, you've come on a very good day because we're going to review everything that we've learned so far. Now, it's all right if you don't understand any of this because you're brand new. But if you do know an answer, just raise your hand, okay? All right. We've been working on our two times tables. Would anyone like to demonstrate? <gasps> okay. Let's do some together. Two times four is? Eight. Two times six is? Twelve. Twelve. 
two times nine is? Eighteen. Excellent. You've been practicing. Pretty soon you'll be able to do any multiplication, whether it's two times seven? Fourteen. Very good. Or thirteen times three hundred and seventy-nine? <laughs> Four thousand nine hundred twenty-seven. I beg your pardon? I think that's the answer. Thirteen times three hundred and seventy-nine. Four nine two seven. Do you know how to multiply big numbers? I read this book last year in mathematics at the library. You like to read? Oh, yes. I love to read. What do you like to read? Everything. But lately I've been reading Dolls Chickens. Charles Chickens. I could read him every day. So could I. Workbooks and let's start with section three. I'll be back in a moment. Don't you keep going, you useless, flaming car! Um, what? Sell me a lemon. You're heading for the chokey, young lady. Chokey? Teach you a lesson. What lesson? You and your father think you can make a fool out of me. My father? The guy with a stupid haircut. I look like my father. You're a spitting image. The apple never rots far from the tree. Miss Honey. Miss Punchbowl teaches our class three lavender. Please get a water pitcher. But Miss Honey. Shh, quickly, she'll be here any second. Come on. Make sure the water's cold, Lavender. Hurry. Eddie, cover the fish. Put away the art project. Put away anything colorful. Oh, Charlie, won't you get those crayons for me? Most great ideas come from hard work and careful planning. Of course, once in a while, they just jump out at you. Raina, Raina, cover the birds and the beetles. Hurry, hurry! I hear her coming. Okay, now, last time, some of you forgot yourselves. Don't speak unless you're spoken to. Don't laugh, don't smile. Don't even breathe loudly. Don't breathe at all. Morning, Miss Trunchbull. Morning, Miss Trunchbull. Sit. Shoo. I have never been able to understand why small children are so disgusting. They're the bane of my life. They're like insects. They should be got rid of as early as possible. <sighs> My idea of a perfect school is one in which there are no children at all. <laughs> Do you agree, Miss Honey? Now, you, front of the class. You two empty your pockets, you'll do it faster, won't you? Excuse me, Mr. Trunchbull. Miss Honey, this could be the most interesting thing you've ever done. Sit down, you squirming worm of vomit. Thank you, Miss Trunchbull. Can you spell? Miss Honey taught us how to spell a long word yesterday. We can spell difficulty. You couldn't spell difficulty if your life depended on it. She taught us with a poem. A poem? How sweet. What poem would that be? Mrs. D, Mrs. I. Mrs. F, F, I. Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, 
Naughty wife! Why are all these women married? Mrs. D, Mrs. I, you're supposed to be teaching spelling, not poetry. 